Well, hello there, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Michelle, and today I want to talk about my favorite authors that I read and found in 2022, and I am going to recommend them to you so that we can read more of them and we can talk about them, and I'm probably going to read every single book they ever read. And there's a lot of authors I really like, but these ones were the standouts for me. These are the ones that I was like, I need more by them. You ever find an author like Gillian Flynn was my favorite author of 2021. I read all of her books literally as fast as I could. And then I ran out and then I was sad. When you find an author that you really like, you just like want to read everything they've ever written. And these are the authors that I want to read everything that they have ever written and then some. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into my favorite authors of 2022. that I really want to talk about is a quick AMZ. Oh my god, this author is so good. So this author is a they, them, and they write a lot of books that are sexually charged. Um, they're gonna break down your conceptions of what is appropriate to talk about with sex, what is appropriate with relationships. They explore different sexualities a lot, they explore different genders a lot, and every single one of their books has an undercurrent of sexuality. The first one that I read was Freshwater, which is essentially their debut novel, which is almost an autobiography about having multiple personality. And in this book, the front and center personalities are actually gods. So it's very interesting because Akweke is Nigerian, and so there is the Nigerian culture. The death of Vivek Oji is completely different from Freshwater. It's not about someone with multiple personalities, it's about somebody who maybe doesn't exactly fit the gender binary. It's completely different from the book Bitter that I read, which is about a 16-year-old artist during a revolution. And that's completely different from the book I'm reading now, which is her current most recent novel that she just released. I can't remember it. It's like something about your death is making a fool of us all or something like that. I'll put the, co I'll put the cover up. I'm listening to the audiobook right now. I am obsessed with this author. Their writing style just hooks me. Even Bitter, which I didn't love as much as the other two, still hooked me and I was obsessed with it. Well, maybe not obsessed as I have been with other books, but the point being, this author is someone that I'm continuing to binge and I'm not alone in doing that. Other people have said that they also binge this author because there's something about their writing style. But you know what's crazy? You know what's really nuts? It's I can never find their books in the bookstore. What up with that Barnes and Noble? Why aren't you stocking a quick a mezzi? Fantastic author, sorry for screaming. The next author I wanna talk about is Jeff Vandermeer. Now this is a completely different kind of author. This guy, um, he's got like a little running joke that he's obsessed with shrooms, potentially the psychedelic kind. I'm not 100% sure, but there definitely seem to be some psychedelic elements in here. First of all, it's inspiring to me because it's the most similar to me of any author that I've read. Like the way that his words read are probably the closest to how I write. So from that perspective alone, it's very intriguing for me to read authors who are similar in their prose style to me. But on top of that, he writes characters that I believe. I believe these characters are real. And on top of that, there's environmentalist themes, which I love an environmentalist theme as my books are also rampant with environmentalist themes. <laughs> and anything that lands in that bucket is gonna stick out to me. But this is really, really interesting because it's a sort of horror. I don't know, just the way it's done, really eerie, really well done. And I wanna read more by him. Uh, he also writes short books, guys. Short books, my fa I love a good short book. I love reading it and moving on. I'm not a big series person, though I did read this series in like a month. I was definitely into it, but really three of these books is like one Sanderson book, so. And that leads me to my favorite author of 2023. Now you might think A Quake Hameze was my favorite because I was just gushing about them for like 10 minutes. However, my favorite author of 2022 is beyond a shadow of a doubt, Meiko Kaokami. I am obsessed. Oh my gosh. The first book that I read by her was Breasts and Eggs, which I read because I saw books with Brittany reading that book. And Brittany and I have very similar tastes, so there are some things that we're a little bit different on. But this was one book that we can agree on was absolutely fantastic. And 
something, you know, it took me a month to read, which typically a book that takes me forever to read is never going to land on my tops. Like, remember, if you guys know, I talked about Dune and Dune took me a month to read because I did not love it. Her book took me a month because I was digesting it. I was letting it sink in. I was obsessed. I was reading regularly. I wasn't taking long breaks from reading, but I was reading slow because it was a lot to take in and the pace was a little bit slower. Essentially, the story is more about wanting to be a mother away from wanting to have a romantic partner. She's actually, in Breast and Eggs, the main character is actually aromantic and asexual, which is really interesting to see represented. Asexual people are not represented enough, and as I have a friend group who's pretty much exclusively asexual, it's really nice to see representation of our clan. You know what I'm saying? Like, people who aren't super driven by sex. It's nice. It's nice, because a lot of society is. The story just was really heartfelt. The characters were really realistic and again the Japanese culture is something I'm very interested in so I really really enjoyed that but then the next book I read was Heaven which also took me a quite a while to read even though it was much shorter it was actually I think a novella technically and it was about a young boy being abused in middle school the reasoning behind why he was abused and how he kind of moves past that abuse and that is a topic that I think we really need to explore more. Now, I feel like the abuse was a little extreme, but the only thing I can think of, and I need to do a little bit more digging, but it just seemed like maybe it took place not in the modern day, but maybe like 20, 30 years ago. It's hard to know about prose because obviously like with translation, it's on the translator to make the prose really strong. Um, so I have to imagine it's even better in Japanese. I don't know for sure. Really just, I mean, I don't speak Japanese well enough to read a Japanese book, but my point being... I freaking love Meiko Kawakami and I want to read absolutely everything that she ever writes, ever. The next author that I wanted to talk about is one that I only read one book of, but after reading this book, I did some research and I have heard that this is not the best of her books and that if anything, this might be one of the lowest of her books and this is an award winner for a reason and that is Yoko Ogawa who wrote The Memory Police. Now, I have heard that other stories by her are even better. I love Japanese authors. So that's something that I definitely discovered this year. I've always been into anime. I've always enjoyed Japanese culture, but reading modern Japanese authors just takes that love to the next level, like Haruki Murakami, um, the other author I'm gonna talk about, Meiko Kawakami, but Yoko Ogawa is very interesting in her style. And The Memory Police was a very interesting story, which as a dystopian makes zero sense. Like the logic behind it makes absolutely no sense. But if you just like take a step back and look purely at the themes, man, this book depressed the crap out of me after I finished it. I needed to read something a little bit lighter, but that's kind of what you want from a dystopian novel. I really, really like her style and I want to read more. Is she someone that I've read a lot of and that I can speak confidently about her skills? No, but I have heard from people that I trust that she gets better than this. And if she gets better than this, I need to read them all. I need to read them all. I do want to give one honorable mention today, and that is to Haruki Murakame, who kind of got me diving into foreign authors this year. In January, I read his book, The Wind Up Bird Chronicle, and I started diving into a lot of foreign authors. I really, really am enjoying diving into foreign authors, and Haruki Murakame has a very interesting style. His first book that I ever read was 1Q84, which hooked me because it was like, it's like 1984. I don't know who said it's like 1984. I don't really see the connection. Um, but people believe it's there. I don't know. Maybe there's something to be said about um, the way that your understanding of the truth and reality is being manipulated by an external source. Maybe that's the element that's like 1984. Maybe it's because it takes place in 1984. Maybe the author was influenced by 1984. I'm not exactly sure. Maybe it could be the element of history changing. That is what makes people say it's like 1984. I'm not entirely sure the connection because when I think 1984, I think of a fascist regime, which I didn't really see in 1Q84. Anyway, I digress. The story is from three different perspectives and it's very, very in-depth, slow paced, but realistic. And I enjoy that. I'm, I'm enjoying these slower paced books lately. And then Wind Up Bird Chronicle was kind of like a surrealist break from reality from this ISTJ type of character who um, loses his cat, goes on a journey to find the cat, 
breaks up with his wife, all this drama happens, and it's very strange. Very strange. Very thematic. And that's what I really enjoy is the thematic writing. I'm a big fan of themes if you haven't picked that up. But anyway, those are my top authors from 2022 and people that I'm looking forward to reading even more books from. Are there any authors that you're obsessed with? Who do you recommend I check out this year? I do have a few books that I am really, really hoping to read this year, um, but I am definitely open to adding more to my TBR. I always love adding more to my MBR, which is what I'm going to officially call it forevermore in my maybe be read because let's be honest, I never stick to a DBR. I've tried. Never works. But thank you so much for watching today. If you like this video and you like me and you want to see more videos by me, go ahead and like and subscribe. But whether you do that or whether you're just here to chill and hang out, I hope that you have a beautiful, amazing, fantastic day. Bye!